Good morning. Today is the 26th. I have cleaned my room. And we are going to start with a daily reflection on the Old Testament. <clears throat> For he, Jesus, shall grow up before him, the Father, as a tender plant, and as a root out of a dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness, and when he shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. Isaiah 53, 2. Like all his mortal brothers and sisters, Jesus came to the earth as a helpful, helpless infant, totally dependent upon the love and care of his parents. He grew up in a humble home, served under his earthly father to learn the skill of carpentry, and knew firsthand what it was to sweat and toil and feel fatigue. There can be no doubt that some things about the young Jesus made him distinctive. He spake not as other men, neither could, be, could he be taught, for he needed not that any man should teach him. Yet he was not to be recognized as the Messiah because he was more handsome than the average Jewish, Jewish boy or because his clothing in some way distinguished him. No people would come to know that Jesus is the Christ by the quiet whisperings of the Holy Spirit. God the Son was to be known only by the power of the Spirit of God. Okay, today is Ezekiel chapter 33. And... A watchman who raises the warning voice save their own souls. Repentant sinners are saved. The righteous who turn to sin are damned. The people of Judah and Jerusalem are destroyed because of their sins. So, in the first couple of verses, he's giving an analogy or um, a parable, if you will. He's saying, in a city people will set a watchman and when he sees the enemy coming and attacking he will blow his horn and if the people hear the horn and get ready for war and battle they're saved if they do nothing they die he's comparing this to Ezekiel he's saying Ezekiel I have set you as a watchman and if you blow the horn and people get ready then you know the blood's not upon you. But if the watchman sees the war coming and doesn't warn the people, then all those who die, that's on the watchman. We talked about this yesterday in chapter 3, 2 or 3, something like that. Um, so it was just making it a little clearer. Um, and then the rest of the chapter, the rest of the chapter and it is about iniquity and people doing iniquity, which we talk a lot about. Um, so nothing really stood out to me. Not, not too much. And there's nothing in the side by side because it goes Ezekiel 18, then 34. So skipping over basically everything. And here's what Ludlow has to say about 33. My hair is a mess. But anyway, uh, Ezekiel 1 through 9. See the commentary for Ezekiel 3, 17 through 19, which we read yesterday. Uh, 33, 10 through 20. See the commentary for Ezekiel 18, 14 through 30, which we didn't read. So let's do that. Okay. The scriptures teach there is an opposite in all things. Thus, if the sinner who repents can have all his sins removed then the person who commits a sin should expect all his former sins to return. One possibility cannot exist without the possibility of the other. And then, 33.17 Yet the children of thy people say, The way of the Lord is not equal, but as for them their way is not equal. This verse could have been translated, yet the sons of your people say the way of the Lord is not fair, but they and their way is not fair. Uh, I believe this to mean that um, people who complain about the standards, 
it's restrictive. It's not fair. I can't do this and I can't do that. And I don't have any freedom. I thought I had free agency. I can't choose this. I can't choose that. The way of the Lord is not fair. But if you think what the scripture is saying here is the way that you're choosing is not fair. You're choosing to have unbridled passion, free reign on all sin and iniquity, and expect no consequences at all. That's not fair. What also isn't fair is Jesus committing no sin, suffering all your sins, your bad choices, your, your um, whoredoms and abominations, and then you just like not accepting the gift of repentance. That's not fair. <sighs> okay. So that's 33. That's all I've got for 33. Nothing really stood out, mainly because it was very much like chapter 3. But we do 34 tomorrow, and then 36, and 37, and then 47. It's jiggling a bit too much for my life. Okay, so I will then leave you with a prayer for a diary of prayer, from a diary of prayer. What did I say today was the 26th? Yes. I looked straight into that light and now everything's just... Okay. This is a Jewish prayer. Blessed art thou, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who makest the bands of sleep to fall upon my eyes. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, to fall... Okay. Let's just start over. Blessed art thou, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who makest the bands of sleep to fall upon my eyes, and slumber upon mine eyeballs. May it be thy will, O Lord my God, and God of my fathers, to suffer me to lie down in peace, and to let me raise up again in peace. Let not my thoughts trouble me, nor evil dreams, nor evil fancies, but let my rest be perfect before thee. O lighten mine eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death, for it is thou who givest light to the apple of the eye, Blessed art thou, O Lord, who givest light to the whole world in thy glory. All right. We'll see you tomorrow. I love you all. Bye.